Number two of our lone best of three of the night, but it's a damn important one. IG taking on LGD. Winner advances to play LV in our last final uh, Eastern best of three leading up to Vegas. The winner of that will be our playoff finals. And again, they'll be joining C-Deck in Vegas as well. And uh, LGD, man, they looked okay. They looked like they were going to be in good shape in game one. Then it was like all of a sudden, like someone, like there was a carbon monoxide leak or something. <laughs> like everything just went wrong immediately. It's like they fell asleep at the keyboard. I know. I, I don't I don't even know what happened, man. Don't even know what happened. They just got really sloppy, missed a lot of spells. I think what started it was the... Um, was some, some unfortunate timings of the, uh, the ultimate from Silencer. It didn't really seem that effective at all. I thought it was going to be good. Like on paper, you look at their lineup and you're like, wow. So, like, have you, have you ever picked Ember Spirit in a pub and someone picked Silencer right afterwards? You're like, oh crap, they just countered me. Uh, same thing goes with Enigma. You pick Enigma and you see Silencer, you're like, oh God. I mean, they had good tools against it. They just didn't execute it well at all. But mm -hmm. anyway, we'll see how they can shake things off and come in with a fresh start here. Game number two, LGD picked up a tried and true combo that we've seen have great success for different teams, especially uh, with this Ember Spirit and Tidehunter. And Invictus Gaming goes with the Lycan and the Jakiro. They've played the Jakiro quite nicely, but they've also played it quite badly. As I, the last time I personally saw IG run this, Lua went like 0, 8, and 0 or something like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I love the lycan Jakiro combo. We've seen IG in particular have a lot of success with it, as you mentioned. Um, LGD with the Ember and the Tide, though, I feel like they've got good answers to begin with. I mean, it all comes down to the laning phase. And IG with the Jakiro pick, and now there's an Elder Titan. And have been seeing a lot of support Elder Titan lately. And it's not that I hate it. It's not like it's terrible or anything. But it is very hit and miss. It is very much, um, you put the, the Elder Titan into the support position, you better hope you don't lose a bunch of fights early. Because if you lose a bunch of fights early, he gets perpetually underleveled. He's not a hero that demands a lot of farm priority. Just because he doesn't need a whole lot to be valuable. I mean, he needs levels more than items, more than anything else. But when you run him in a support seconds, position, he can fall so far behind. And yes, eventually you'll be able to Five max out like natural remaining. order. We have been seeing uh, mostly anymore um, that hybrid build with the Echo Stomp being taken early and even a few points going into it early, even more than just the one value point um, because of the utility, as you've always mentioned, uh, being so high. But if we see what we've seen IG do in the past, which is take a Jakiro now with another very strong support in the Vengeful Spirit, they can run the Lycan mid. And it, it, it was you who was saying just the other day that RTZ said that he thinks Ferrari's Lycan is the best in the world, right? Was uh, that, I'm Sylar. pretty sure. Silar. Silar. Okay. So Ferrari, I'm sure, is right there as well. And uh, it's kind of funny I got that mixed up as it is against LGD. Could have swore it was, uh, I guess it was Ferrari. But anyway. 
You can run the Lycan mid, get yourself another solo farming core, and then try to go aggressive with a, a very punchy, um, aggressive trial lane with Avenge and Jakiro plus one. And then you can farm the Jakiro, or maybe um, you get a, another semi support semi core and farm them. But with the Lion and the Elder Titan, yeah, no, th we saw them do almost this exact same thing. Yeah, interesting here. LGD, I, we saw them also do the Elder Titan specifically against Lycan last night against Ly Gaming. Um, and it worked out nicely. I am in, okay. Interesting that the Wind Rangers, Wind Ranger here is picked up now. Could this? Oh be no, no. It? We saw IG do this though. We saw them run an aggressive trial lane with Jakiro. I think it was the Ogre instead of the Venge, and the Ogre was banned. But we saw them do this um, with Wind Ranger at the front of it, and they looked yeah. to go aggro, which I think could have a lot of success it's against an Elder Titan, a Lion, and an Ember Spirit, bad. assuming it will be the Ember in the one position and not in mid. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I vaguely remember that, but I, I remember it working out, right? I think it did. Oh, yeah, they crushed with it. Yeah, so um, I, I do fear a little bit that they don't have any, like, remaining. superior, like, total lockdown for the Titan Hunter. We've talked about this before, where there are a number of heroes that could just take him out and not have to worry too much about the uh, the Kraken shell things, for like, uh, like Legion Commander Ten ulti, um, you know, the Doom, of course. They could possibly Five run the Doom this remaining. game. Yep. Uh, I think it makes a ton of sense. Well, they yeah, they could. Uh, it certainly LGD would be effective against Ember. Would it be good against the Tidehunter? Yeah, I, I could see them running that. But they have options. Uh, I think the lineup is still very push-heavy, and it works nicely. Vengeful Spirit, Aura, Lycan, Wolves, Jakiro, Liquid Fire. Wind Rangers, Focus Fire actually is pretty good in pushing towers, especially with the Naganims. Mm. Uh, but LGD, I think, has a fair and balanced lineup, too, with the Elder Titan and... A good pu good D push. Oh, Medusa here picked up for some superior late game pushing, and very difficult to actually dive Medusa once you do get that uh, that stone gaze off. I wonder if they're gonna if they would think about switching this up. The Annie Mage is still available, and AM really just borks a Medusa completely. Um, if they wanted to switch it up, I still think that at least to this point they've planned to run the Jakiro Venge and Wind Ranger aggressively. Then the Lycan mid, and then a solo, another solo core. I, I think Doom, if they want to go with an, with the original remaining. approach, would be great for IG here. But if they wanted to switch it up, Five they could fall remaining. the Jakiro and the Vengeful back into a tri lane, send the Wind Ranger off lane, Lycan mid, and then yeah, there's the Anti Mage. I, I think that's <laughs> what they're going to do. I think they're going to swap it. I swear to God, I was going right when you said Anti Mage, I was going to agree with you and say I think it's a really good pick here, mm -hmm. like because. Sometimes we've seen anti mage drafted in the Eastern scene where it's anti mage and then they don't have too much team fight or right. they don't have too much D push or push themselves, but they have all of this. They have good, at least early game team fight. Late game team fight, I definitely favor LGD, but I feel like anti mage go is going to handle the late game for you. Lycan will also be okay in the late game too. And then you have a good damage booster in the Vengeful Spirit. So, yeah, I do think anti mage is a very fine pickup and i totally agree with you you called it you're you've been very good about calling heroes i must say well it's not because i'm particularly the, that knowledgeable about dota just i if i watch teams long enough i learn their tendencies <laughs> if there's anything that i that i feel like i am i am okay at. but anyway um but yeah the anime i still think that the original plan was to go aggressive with Shakiro Vinge, and wind ranger but i think they're swapping and i think they're doing making the right decision here as i mean it, it, you see it in pubs you see it in pro games Annie Mage is just an unbelievable pain for a Medusa. And she, he farms faster, so he comes online faster. He can go pure fighting build if he wants to just, like, come out and fight and never give the Medusa a chance to farm at all. He's super mobile, which means he can clean fights up. Even if you want to do want to hard farm him, they're going to have sufficient enough damage and push to force fights between the Lycan, and the Jakiro, the Wind Ranger, and the Venge that he can just come in at the end of fights and look to clean heroes up just getting free kills. I'd love this draft from IG right now. And LGD, I mean, it's not a bad draft, not at all. But I actually do feel like they're going to be really, really, have to be really defensive for quite some time to make sure nobody falls behind. They can't get in July behind, for example. They can't have Faith, who will be playing the support Elder Titan, fall behind. They can't lose that lane. The Ember, obviously another example, and the Medusa right there with them. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I want to see how they, are they going to, yep, they're going to Sim Ferrari mid. Okay, that was my question. Yeah, if they're going to, I was thinking instinctively acro tri lane with this against LTDs, and maybe they will. Maybe they're just having uh, Chizbug come up here to place a ward and then move around. If mm -hmm. that's what they do, I like it a lot because of what Luo did with this build. He's gone Stout Shield, uh, Double Iron Branch, and then just tons of Tangos. Because this lineup, all he has to do, like, yeah, Titan Hunter is great against Melees, but if he can't cast his Anchor Smash, he's not 
he's not that great anymore uh, all of a sudden. Mm. Uh, so and then obviously if you just mana burn him. Anti mage will take a little bit of harassment for the first two levels, but after that, I imagine the uh, the titan will be out of mana. So then it just becomes kind of a wash lane, and then and then you'll actually win bottom, and uh, mid will be eh, about even. I mean, Lycan will still get all the CS. Actually went for stout quelling as well with a pool. So yeah, I like this. And aggro tri lanes are always viable. Again, it's still venge up here. Just maybe, maybe just to help out for a little begins. bit. But aggro tri lanes are always viable when you have a lycan on the team, because yeah. he, he boosts up their attack damage, and then if any kind of engagement, just makes it so much more beneficial for the team to like it. Well, and it's symbiotic too. Lycan in mid is you know before six, just like uh, so many of these. I, I I struggle to call. I don't want to call them non-traditional, but usually when you think mid, you think range, you think some kind of an escape or survivability function, whatever. Um, and lately, just in the last patch, we've been seeing a real resurgence of heroes like Lycan and stuff. So, um, excuse the nomenclature as I'm just kind of all over the place with it. But whenever you see like a Lycan who is a really easy mid to gank if you have good movement and you can just get ahead and not get noticed on your way down. When you run any kind of an aggression, even if it is a dual lane like this, it keeps the supports in the safe lane on the other side so hemmed up that they're going to have a hard time roaming the mid. So like you said... The, uh, the aggressive lane, be it a uh, dual lane, be it a, a, an aggressive tri-lane, is helped out by the how, and they in turn are helping the Lycan be a little more secure in his lane phase in mid. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree. I really love this from IG. And they also have the how to boost up their damage. And this is actually a, a very ideal, like, kind of disruptive dual lane. Like, they're both pretty tanky and elusive. They actually get a very nice D ward. I, they must have seen this because they place that sentry very, very far into that lane. So a nice little win there for IG. If they're able to get some experience here too and then get the lane back in their favor, um, it'd actually be nice if June could like power shot the centaur so that those creeps just kill those kill that camp faster and actually pushes in their favor. But That's either really smart. Yeah. Either way, they're they're doing fine down here. Anti mage is getting free farm, I would imagine. Um, even though the tide's probably getting some decent farm, and actually he's up to five and one, so pretty good for him. Um, he will be, you know, doing uh, not as well as the anti mage. He actually pulls the creeps away. Yep, trying to creep skip it. Takes a magic missile for his trouble. Anti Mage is just going to continue to farm. This should be a free way for him, and this is the great way to play Tide. He's only got one point in the crack and doesn't need a whole lot more. He's going to walk by. Is he trying to get the rune here? Yeah. That is so greedy in July. You grab an entire wave, gets himself a bounty rune, and he's going to make it back anyway. Oh, that's so greedy, but I love it. Just, just completely complacent. I was like, yeah, so I've got six creeps behind me and you're auto attacking me, but I'm Tidehunter, so I'm the big watermelon that doesn't care about your feelings. Oh, he didn't. <laughs> These creeps are so annoying trying to actually keep aggro uphill like that in small <laughs> areas. You have to you have to really like stay there and attack them and make sure that they still attack you uphill through the fog. And he actually missed two creeps as they, as they march on back to the lane. But uh, yeah, he knew that there was no man on the bench and the auto attacks were even though it's a level 1 Kraken, we're mitigated by 10 damage. and Yeah, he was fine. But anyway, bottom lane, still kind of a wash. DD actually up onto Chuan. He's only level 1, though. That's a little bit concerning. And gets a nice little peck of damage on Siler. Siler has two points in the Mystic Snake, so he's going to be able to output a fair amount of damage as the lane phase develops as well. In mid, MMY, getting his stack on, doing his thing with the Ancients. And now coming up just to... Make Ferrari a little bit more nervous. Ferrari basically out of mana now. He's sitting at 13 CS to the 12 of the Ember, so he's not going to be super upset about that. They are beginning to pressure Siler a little bit here. And there finally is level 2 for the Jakiro. It's level 3 for the Wind Ranger, so it looks like June has been a lot more close to the XP thus far. I feel like Angel is actually doing a really nice job up here, too. Um, even though he has no mana, as you said, he's still just being disruptive. He's able to keep himself in XP range. He's level 3.5. And we haven't really seen any concerted pressure. And I think it's wise to just focus on Luo's farm and not worry about killing the Tide. But yeah. it's going to be problematic. Well, I don't. They, they can't kill the Tide, even though it's a 1v2 situation. It's just too tanky. There's not enough mana up on the Chizbug. And even though this mana burn is nice, once you do get him to zero mana, the mana burn extra damage has no effect anymore. So he's actually it's harder actually to do da more damage. But uh, Yep, Luo's going for the poor man's into the Ring of Health. We'll have a relatively early battle for if this keeps up and he doesn't get any aggression. Oh, wow. Chizbug in trouble. There's the Anchor Smash. Can he get in front? No, Ty tried to body block him. He's taking a lot of damage. Makes it up high ground. Doesn't matter. Chizbug drops the MMY. And LGD draws first blood. Just wrong place, wrong time. That's actually just really good awareness. The angles, they, uh, they pincered him. MMY came from this side, and Tide was coming down this way. 
and they caught him out going for the rune. Well played. I feel like MMY got all those uphill attacks. He's actually going to D-Ward too. It's not going to be the longest duration left on it, but still pretty nice. But yeah, I feel like he got all those uphill attacks, which is pretty favorable for him. But Luo, still the top farmer in the game, at least in terms of CS, 27 and 13 for him. Mid, as we've talked about, is pretty much a wash as expected. And then bottom lane, with the rotations of Lion, I imagine the Windrunners keep her back up. Yeah, she's 13 to 17, now 18 of Sarlar, which is just fine for IG, I think. I like the way that IG has kind of managed this bottom lane now. With MMY giving a lot of attention to mid, just trying to do his thing there, securing the first blood. What they had done is rotate the Wind, Wind Ranger over and do basically what you had said. She was just stealing the camps during the pulls and and so on. And she's up to level four and a half now. This gave uh, Chuan a lot of time to catch up on lane XP, and he's up to level three and a half now. In fact, I usually don't open it this early, but I do want to see efficiency-wise. Yeah, it is going IG's way in both gold and uh, experience now. Um, and again, the first blood was given up to LGD, so despite that, they're still farming and gaining experience much more efficiently. And this is where I worry for Faith. He's at level four now, not bad. He's doing some things with stacks and so on and so on. If he ends up dying a couple of times, he's going to be in so much trouble. Shackle does latch. Medusa's in range. She's going to make her way over. Echo Stomp. Oh, he got them both. Now Siler's there with the Mystic Snake. Juwan's going to die to it. And Faith will die to a power shot, but still much better for Medusa to have come over and gotten that kill. Still picking away Juwan. And yeah, Juwan better run as he salves even on his way out. The Mystic Snake could have been tossed. I think. I guess it just came off cooldown, but unable to catch up. Nonetheless, LGD leads again. 2-1. to one. I think actually if Ferrari held there, I, I checked him actually as soon as that happened and he had it up. I think if he held, then it actually becomes a cleaner exchange and they maybe get the kill before Chuan dies. Kind of unfortunate there of, of some communication, but in July, he's got his bottle, so any kind of mana burn is not going to be as effective as it once was. Siler goes for a face boots on a Medusa. Um, so, not going to be as tanky early on, but we'll have extra damage and higher mobility. Yao yeah, just wasted a bit of time. He picked up a DD and made his way pretty much all the way to top lane before deciding that it wasn't going to be a good opportunity to go for a gank. So, um, does give him and Y some room, but still, he's going to fall a little bit behind because of that. He and Ferrari are dead even with each other. 30 and 28. A um, few more denies for the Lycan, though, so I uh, have to give him perhaps the advantage in that regard. And again, I'm going to be watching Faith. Um, the last time I saw a support Elder Titan, the issue was he got to about this point and then the fighting started and he just never survived a fight. And he started, started stopped being any kind of a factor at any point. And IG, I think, is doing very well in this bottom lane still yet. Siler can't even feel comfortable enough to come forward and try to CS at all, even though he does have Faith back in the jungle. Yep, Ferrari now doing some jungling. Is bottle crowing as well on the Lycan, just really getting the most out of what he can. And I, I imagine Faith, yep, he's going to, or not Faith, but uh, Chizbug, will soak up a little bit of much needed experience. He's been doing a good job pulling and whatnot, but he actually hasn't had the most experience gain in the, in the world. As you check uh, Faith on the Elder Titan, for example, is actually up to level 5 and just wants one more creep, whereas Chizbug's at level 3 and 3 fourths. So this is very, very effective for him. And I actually, oh. Ferrari says, move over. I want my lane back. And we're going to have an engagement at top. Luo in trouble. They catch him and they kill him. Three to one. Very effective first usage of Ravage. There's that double damage of Yao. Playing patient. Again, he had rotated the top and not done anything for 30 to 45 seconds after until he turned around to go back to mid. But held on to it and used it wisely this time. They're going to work on the tower now. And Faith is now rotating in the mid, but Siler's going to be caught. There's an ice path to follow the shackle shot at bottom. That mana shield doing work. Doesn't have a ton of mana left, though. And the TP in actually canceled. So they just show TP instead of actually going back. Tier 1 in the meantime at top does end up dropping. Did they smoke up for top? They must have because they yeah, had they a lane ward down. Okay. Yeah, they, they smoked this way. Really nice pressure from them. I, I feel like they, they couldn't allow the animation to just free farm anymore. Yep. Even if their lanes were doing not too badly, I feel like he is very, very good in this game, as we, as you expected, of course, and called out. And any kind of pressure is going to be just so good in stopping that, that battle fairy. So nicely done by LGD, Ravage and all. And that's going to be probably Arc Boots if he wants them for in July. Mm -hmm. um, I also wouldn't be surprised if we've seen a couple of times just the straight blink. But this is the Chinese Doto, so I also wouldn't be surprised if we see a mech up yep. before the blink. <laughs> 
<laughs> Buckler wand. Watch. That's what he's going back to the base to buy right now. Buckler wand. Buckler. Wouldn't surprise me. It really, really wouldn't. <laughs> yep. That's that's what they love over here in the, in the eastern state. But Ferrari, I imagine he has Vlad's here pretty soon. He actually has, an, I think, enough for it. Uh, no. He needs another 150 gold or so. Well, I like where they are net worth-wise. The, they've got three heroes, and this is startling to see on the chart. June actually has a higher net worth as of right now than the Medusa does, despite going two on three. But in, in fairness, that two on three became a two on two very quickly. And for the most part, what's Faith going to do in that situation against two heroes like that that are so hard to kill? Like, he's basically just lived in this range the entire game. And, I mean, he's doing all right. He's coming up on his level six. He's got the one point in the Echo Stomp, and since and after that, three in the Astral Spirit and Ancestral Spirit. And um, the uh, two in uh, natural order. So, well, no, actually, one in a natural order. My mistake. But they need to get him online. And I don't even know what he builds this game. Like, assuming he can take the pressure off a of tide for the mech, that'd be nice. But we'll find out. Angelai's taking a big old stack. And this is what in one of the things MMY was doing here mid all this time. He got a bunch of stacks on this. And Angelai happy to take them to the tune of, I don't know, probably 800 gold. Like at least that was so good for him. I believe that was a quad stack. He just he just bought his arc boots. Had like two hundred gold left over. Yep. So he had about almost like a thousand gold, like a little over a thousand, I think. That's so good for him. God. <laughs> we will see when he wants to go. I, I do want to watch his build because I think we're gonna. I think his build will tell us a lot about the play style that LGD wants to use for the next ten to fifteen minutes. Faith again getting close to. His six, and now, well, if he doesn't buy something soon, I'm going to assume Blink Dagger, because he's well over the amount to buy a headdress or a buckler. A top, the push is going to be on, and there's a <laughs> safety ice path. He has gone with the build we both tend to prefer, 1-1-2, maxing the liquid fire, and they should get this really uncontested. Faye's going to come up just to get this XP when it does drop, that's it. Radiance Got off the Echo Slam, in, or Echo Stomp. In the, in the meantime, mid, Ravage is up again in July and MMY. Want to bring down Chizbug. And, yep, here comes the TP immediately. Chizbug's dead completely. In July, didn't Ravage yet. And Chuan threw an Ice Path, did catch Yao, but coming by himself, actually really risky. Here comes June, no Shackle, gonna latch. There's a Liquid Fire. And we see them beginning to converge on both sides. And I actually like LGD and where they stand at this moment. Um, if IG can get everyone here, though, and just not give up a tremendous Ravage, they'll be okay because Siler's trying to just play a 4 Protect 1 style, just split pushing and farming on the Medusa down in bottom lane. Oh, Echo Stomp actually caught June, yep. And there's the finger. Hex and... The Slide of Fist finishes him off. That's drums now done for the Ember Spirit. That's 5-1. to one. And IG finds themselves in a hole just like they did in game one. We can see LGD has, it's been up and down a little bit early on, but they are continuing to build on their golden experience now. Uh, that was the easiest echo stomp of, of his life, by the way. Like, she, <laughs> I, I say June because I think of it as a girl's name for some reason, but like he just stood there and just took it. Maybe he wasn't expecting the echo stomp to come out, but that's the trend now, man. Like, people are getting echo stomp a lot earlier now. It's not the old Elder Titan where. You would just get the uh, the nuke and the astral spirit. They're getting it like level two, so maybe just didn't expect it. As you just kind of sat there in a very easy kill for LGD. In July, continuing the just do stacks. He's gonna have enough for his blink if that's what he wants right now. And yep, there it is. I love it. Getting blink first, and we have not seen enough of that. But I think that tells us that LGD is going to be using the Ember, the Elder Titan, the Tide and the lion to just basically play ultra aggressive and try to make space for the Dusa, because right now she is very susceptible. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Yep, she is going for the tried and true Lincolns, which does block some very good spells, like Swap, the Mana Void for Anti-Mage, so it, it's very warranted this game and very appropriate. And just an overall good item for mana regen and extra stats for your mana shield. So I like that for Medusa. Not farming it, of course, the quickest in the world, but uh, that that title goes to Lycan, who's got Power Treads, Vlad's, and I don't think much else, but still, not too bad. Middle tower is under attack. Got more convergence here, and in July actually blinked ahead, went for an anchor smash. You're going to catch Chizbug easily with the Searing Chains. Can they run him down? Here comes Ferrari. He wants to fight. 
Echo Stomp was there. Ferrari wants to try to pursue this. There's a Shackle. Caught two heroes in July. Does manage to get the Ravage off, though. And now, June has to back off. They only got Chizbuck. If they can get any return kill at all, it'll be worthwhile. Shackle, how long? Got it right now if he wants to spin it. In the meantime, here's Siler. Using that ulti, Echo Stop behind it, didn't catch anything. Well-placed Ice Path from Chuan. Slows down the pursuit, but doesn't stop it entirely. And wow, Slide of Fist disjointed the power shot. Oh. And they didn't get anything out of it. Like it in the meantime, looks like he managed to clean up MMY. But the Wolves still on pursuit. They actually get the Elder Titan with the power shot. Chizbug back up off his death, doing good damage. Now Yao's re-engaged. There's the Flame Guard and the Searing Change. June's right behind him. But they're going to lose Chizbug again. Shackle does catch him. Chizbug turns, throws the magic missile, but now in July is there to finish the kill off. And can they get the tie? Not a lot of mana for June. He's got five stick charges. Ice Path just barely misses. Power shot. No, shot it down mid instead of the high ground to the high path. So it ends up being eight to three. In the meantime, Luo is trying to do his split push. Medusa did rotate out, so she did slow down on her farm a little bit. But at the end of that, believe it or not, we can take a look at the graphs. And I was going to say, it looks like that favorite IG across the board. Because when you look at the net worth, the two who gained there were the Lycan and the Animage. So the time wasted by LGD, even though they did get as many kills as they did, ends up being a net loss. Yep, and this is going to be a 16-minute Battle Fury for Lua, which is not too bad. Like, he, he died once. It would have been like 14 minutes if he didn't die, maybe even earlier. Yeah. But uh, I think that's still fine for them. I think a big mistake, though, was after a very nice shackle shot on the two heroes, it was the Lion and the Tide. They just chose mm -hmm. to go for the Tide, and that damage triggered the Kraken Shell, which then yep. in turn triggered the ulti. I think if they just gung-ho and went for the Lion, it, it becomes a much cleaner and better exchange for IG. Kind of a little misstep right there, but uh, yeah, they still went, all things considered, not too badly for IG. They, a lot of spa space creation for Luo, and now with the Battle Fury online, you have the Mental Clock, of course. You do have fantastic late game for LGD. It's just a matter of how much faster the anti mage can now farm. I'm keeping an eye on Luo. He either had amazing game sense right there, or he just happened to be moving in this farm pattern because he was deep in his own jungle, and Yao and MMY went headhunting for him with a smoke, couldn't find him, and he basically just beelined from right here all the way down to safety, to, to there, didn't stop. And June, not gonna be as lucky, caught out in July's right there. Very easy kill. Their ability to burst down any one hero they're willing to blow their abilities on is tremendous. They're gonna get a tier one off of that as well, so well played by LGD. Ferrari is smoked and has it popped. In July, checking Roshan, and it looks like that was the plan Ferrari had. Perhaps to head in there. In the meantime, Luo, with some help from Chuan, pushing this tier one bottom, and Siler's gonna land in. They get the tower, no deny. Another TP in at the last second. Will complete, that's going to be Yao. Looks like they're happy to pull back. But this is the point in the game where LGD is just gonna be super concerned with Roshan all the time. Kind of an awkward TP by the Ember Spirit. Yeah, I, I think I the same thing. I don't really, like, first of all, I thought it was like, well, Siler's TPing a little bit late, but maybe trying to get a deny. And then Ember Spirit TPs in the well afterwards. Didn't do anything, but doesn't have a remnant out either to go somewhere else. So a little bit of missed farm. And actually, now he's gonna t <laughs> he's just going to take these creeps away from uh, Silar. Or at least try to. But uh, interesting stuff. And more space creation again from, uh, from the members of IG as uh, Luo is pushing out top. Trying to split push a little bit. Be a little bit of a rat. One of the great things, too, actually, is that he doesn't need to buy Vlad's this game. Because the Vlad's has already been purchased by uh, Lycan, so people who always talk about, oh, get Vlad's on AM, don't get Vlad's on AM, rush the. He doesn't have to, because now he's already got Vlad's on his team. I love it. And he is beginning to go to work. The Battle Fury did come out a while ago. He's got 1,400 gold to go with it, as well as his treads and his poor man's. Yao, in the meantime, not far from his either. Does he have anything on the courier? Got a Lincoln Sphere on the courier, Lincoln Sphere recipe. And it is going to be done on the Dusa. But. I feel I, I the anti mage's progression and he needs to not die anymore. One death, fine, that happens. If he dies too many times, they are gonna get ahead. Right now he's got about a five hundred gold lead on the Medusa. Not bad, but not great either. And they need to win fights. They need to, to try to catch L G D out. And I feel like L G D, again, we knew suspected at least it was coming whenever they actually prioritized a blink over the mech on the tide. Something we've seen them do very, very little throughout Eastern play. Um, that just told you how aggressive they wanted to be, how much pressure they wanted to put on the map, and Yao's been a part of a lot of it. 
This is great so long as it continues to work. If they end up losing fights, though, they lose so much ground. Yep. But, I mean, their, their tools to burst someone down, like you mentioned, are ridiculous with the Elder Titan plus Ember. This is one tried and true combo that we've seen a long time. Last oh, reactions. And they're going to catch him with the Searing Chains. And Echo Stomp right on the money. Beautifully executed as Yao secures the kill. And the chaining together of the abilities was perfect. That's one death too many on this Animage. One death too many. He really doesn't need to die again. With those TP reactions, though, they're going to have a long way to truck it to get back to Roshan. And Ferrari should take this pretty quickly with the help of the Vengeful Spirit. Only one point in her, into her uh, Wave of Terror, however. Yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. I, I never understood that, by the way. I felt like the extra damage you get from the bonus of the Venusaur isn't really worth it. Oh, here came the Spirit, though. They need to take this fast. He's going to BKB for it. Okay, right decision. They're coming in. There's a Ravage as well. Ferrari does manage to pick it up. June and Chizbug just dying immediately. Ferrari doesn't even want to fight. He's just going to run. There's the Ravage. Got two. Jawan, oh, beautiful follow from MMY. Got a both of the Earth Spike. I'll tell you what, man. Faith and MMY are borderline winning this game on their own. July, in July, not a bad time with his Ravages either, but these have been some beautiful Echo Stomps and some beautiful Earth Spikes. That's a full wipe. The Animage did respond right, right before the end, but in a span of about, I don't know, 180 seconds, give or take, they wiped five off the map. What a huge boon for LGD, and now we begin to see that cliff face heading in their favor. Yeah, it's it's really a scary combination. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all next game Elder Titan gets banned. I think it's just too much too much uh, negative armor and the uh, magic resistance to, to really deal with for this team. They First of all, they're going to absolutely need to BKB on Luo. I know he doesn't want to go at anti-mage players hate getting BKB, but he has to get a BKB. Otherwise, because they're going to need him to fight. Another two-man or a spike. There's a swap from Chizbug and a magic missile. Nice ice bath, but here comes Yao again. Just bug in trouble. One sound. That's MMY, but they do get the immediate return kill. And they're going to get a tower off of it as well, so no doubt that favors LGD as well. And Siler now up to, after that tower, just about 2,000 gold, right around 1,900 after this wave, certainly 2,000 gold, and he's going to melt this quickly. Split shot's pretty fun ability to farm with. He's actually at 2,400 now after taking the tower and that wave. So he has his Lincolns, 2,400 gold aside. They've managed to bring down Luo twice, and he's still looking for item progression. Only has a Yasha with his Battle Fury at 22. Could be much, much better. Uh, what's the answer for IG right now? What are they doing wrong, and what can they do better? Well, like I said, they're really going to need a BKB on Anti-Mage. I don't think they can get away with him just split-pushing all this game. There's going to be a time very soon in the next, like, less than 10 minutes where he has to fight. And I, he will probably finish up this Manta, which is... Probably still the right build, but I think immediately needs a BKB. They need to take these fights a little bit more smartly. Um, the thing that's scary, though, is this Medusa ulti. As you saw with the Ferrari, you were like, yeah. he, he booked it. Does manage to make it away. I didn't interrupt you because I was pretty sure he was going to be able to rim it before they could burst him. Did take three quarters of his health of damage, though, so good attempt from the two at top. But yeah, also this Medusa ulti, as you saw with Ferrari, like in the Roche pit, he just has to, he can't even fight it with BKB on. Just has to run away. Um, I will say that fight did go a little bit better just because Roche is very favorable of a position for LGD to fight in, but I still think that their their team fight composition is just so sound. Well, their execution is there, too. It's one thing to be like, oh, you can do this, that, and the other, and on paper, this works. They have really, really made the Lion and the Ember Spirit picks synergize well, and we're seeing two and three-man Earth Spikes left and right. Beautiful Echo Stomps, and that's really, like, to me, the difference maker. These stuns that, you know, <laughs> whenever you think of an Earth Spike, it's a reliable single target stun. But getting two targets as often as he has, that's not reliable. That's something that's just skill difference. And MMY is playing it gorgeously. Well, rarely do I even see MMY lose on this hero. I think this is one of his highest winning heroes in, in Dota at this, at least in the last, at least in Dota 2. Like, I. Like I said, this guy is probably my favorite support player in all of China. And when he was on DK, um, he played this hero a lot. And that's how I really noticed him. So doing doing the same, honestly, in this game, performing quite well. Well, LGD in total command of the map, total command of the pace. And I'm with you regarding Luo. 
this not joining the fight stuff's got to go. He's going to have to start coming in soon. And, I mean, his farm rate's not bad. His net worth, though, is now number three with the Medusa at top, which is nowhere. You can't allow her at 24 minutes to be the most farmed hero on the map. Like, you need to kill her. You need to take towers. You need to do something. Speaking of, look at the warding out of LGD. Look at this. Three wards. One here. One here. And one here. They're just making this their base of operations, and they're daring IG to come out. Here comes the TP in from MMY again. If he stays up, oh, this should have been seen. Okay. Well, Luo, you gotta back up after that wave. Like very, if if he dies here, it's completely his fault. Okay, that was really <laughs> close because he had complete full vision of that. Mm. Anyway, also one thing I don't agree with at all is the anti mage only putting one level in his mana break. Like yeah. I know that you do this a lot for just farming reasons and to get your extra HP up and everything, but I don't think that warrants. I I, I don't I don't think that's worth it. You pick the anti mage for the mana burn specifically against Medusa. Yep. And I know he's probably going to be leveling up soon, but I feel I still feel like it's useful, like even just in a general sense. No, I agree with you. I mean, the the way that LGD changed this game up in terms of the way they started to play with all of the team fighting and everything else. Right about that time, he should have, even if his plan was originally to do what he's doing now, that's about the time you need to change that up because you need that damage. You need that ability to focus on Medusa. You need that ability to burn the mana of an Ember Spirit and the Tidehunter if you can. Speaking of, there's going to be another Echo Stomp. Tide trying to come in. There's going to be the Earth Spike. They don't need to spin Ravage on June. Nobody's coming to his aid. And they feed another. In July, it's going to blink and get off a Ravage. That got two. Yao's there to finish off Juwan before he can do much of anything. Double kill for Siler. And this one is officially out of hand. Oh, MMY. Is, he TPs. Yep, this is... Oh, we missed it. Oh, that was some character. So he didn't have the Hex on cooldown. They might still get him, though. No, they're not going to get him. That was really unfortunate. He had such a good idea. TP to the back tower, like, in the midst of all this chaos, so Lua wasn't expecting it. Just couldn't land a stun in time. Gold now up to 7,500 in favor of LGD and IG. You know, this is the downside to a Lycan pick. When the hero and his, like, even if he's struggling, if his team is getting things done across the map, he snowballs and he becomes such a threat. Whenever everyone on your side is struggling, he is not a get back in at carry, you know? He is not a carry that does particularly well trying to play from behind. Now they're going to try to engage. Ice Path comes in. MMY once again secures the kill. And they are just flat out playing IG this game. You know, LGD just seems to fall apart. What is doing? <laughs> Feed. He just walked up and died. Behind that, we're going to see an Earth Spike. And they do manage to get Luo as well. This is getting ugly. Yeah. Like, everyone's dying. Like, the feed is real. Yeah, I actually think this game is over. I don't, I don't think... There's a couple of things. One, I, um, they just shut down AM a little bit too quickly. Like, he, he yeah. had a chance to get really, really big there. Two deaths. That's the problem with anti mage. You die and get set back a little bit against a team like this that can push very, very hard. Specifically, Elder Titan Ember Spirit. Those two heroes in conjunction with the spirit and the ability to slide a fist everybody is ridiculously strong. We've seen it. And he got set back. Also, another innate problem is yes, the Wind Ranger was nice in the sense, actually. Hold that thought. Juan is dead. Yep, they can't even fight. Like, they can't, like, it's one thing to be losing fights. They can't even begin to fight. Yeah, GG. Every time they were coming in the range of the heroes, they were dying. Everyone. Every hero on their team. And what a statement from LGD here in game number two. I, this definitely fits the category of statement game. Coming in, the higher seed. IG actually fighting their way from uh, the, the lowest rung possible. The last team in to our playoffs. Getting past Tong Fu last night. Or technically this morning, I guess. And going up against an LGD squad that much like IG had underperformed largely throughout D2L play. Then they kind of drop the ball in game one and, and it ends up getting ugly. They come in and I, like, we both dug the Animage pick. I I like their draft beginning to end, but I, I don't think it was a draft issue. I think this was just flat out outplayed by LGD. Well, I, I will say I, I still thought Anti-Mage was a good pick. I still think that there were problems with the draft, though. Like, this idea for the Jakiro and Wind, Wind Ranger off lane, it worked in the lane, and you can be all happy and fine about it. It's like, yeah, we kind of got some farm on Wind Ranger and stifled Medusa a little bit, and 
cool dual lanes, but Wind Ranger, it, like I've talked about this specifically, we've seen Wind Ranger picked up in a mid roll, and I like it. I think it works. I think it dominates most one v one matches. But in a role like this, it's like a more primary farmer. I feel like she just does nothing. Like she gets a couple of shackle shots, which is great, but I don't really feel her effectiveness after that. And then also just the general sense, I think the supports on IG just died way too much. And it's not necessarily their fault, but that was just also, well, some of it was their fault, but some of it was also just the power of the Ember Spirit and Elder Titan. And as you mentioned, MMY, I can't take things away from him. That guy was all over the place uh, from start to finish. So very well played, much better played by LGD, specifically MMY and I would say the draft. But uh, yeah, game three coming up. Yao in July and Faith, in my opinion. I, I don't know. Like, everyone played so well. 6 0 and 10 for Yao. MMY was on point. Siler Farned and pressed R a couple of times and got some kills. So, I mean, you can't, I'm not trying to slide him, just saying that's what you do on a Medusa. Um, I feel like in July's ravages were very good. Um, not a whole lot of mistakes made there. Very patient with them at times. Um, and really coming out ahead because of that. And Faith really on point with his Echo Stomps in pretty much every situation. Just good draft and a good game from LGD. We look ahead now to game number three. This is our second round of the Bubble Race Playoff to Vegas. Winner meets LV in our finals, and the winner of that match will end up going to Caesars coming up in January to compete in our four-team land at CES 2015. I'm AC, and that's Trouf. Please make sure you hit follow here on twitch.tv uh, slash D2L. We want to have you back for all the action. This is just our Eastern Division. And doesn't end after this. We still got Western matches to play. Still got our Western playoffs. And then, of course, our grand finals coming up in January and plenty planned for 2015. So want to have you back as often as we can. You can also find the D2L on Twitter and Facebook at D2L.